All right, the first etch of our plates. So as soon as you have finished your drawing and you know it's totally finished, uh, we're gonna be moving into this process. So here's the, all the stuff that you're gonna need, blowing by you really fast. Uh, and we're gonna be doing this all on the glass surfaces or a surface that can be cleaned really well. So your first step is you wanna tape down the plate to the surface of the glass. You wanna keep this mostly on the edge of the plate. So I'm looking at like the, the last half inch of the plate on two sides. I don't need to tape down all four sides. And in fact, I only want it on like the right and left ends of the plate here. So I wanna make sure it's nice and secure. And then the first thing that I'm gonna use on it is talc, talc powder. So I'm gonna sprinkle that onto, the, onto my drawing and I'm gonna move that around with a soft brush. What this is doing is it's kind of locking the grease in place uh, where I drew it. I mean, it's also gonna make it so that when I am moving through processing or etching the, the plate, that the gum Arabic is gonna wanna come right up to the edge of the image. So it's really gonna preserve our white spaces and um, also keep the grease content where, where we want it to be. So I'm gonna move off any excess uh, talc that there is there brush it into a trash can or back into the talc container. And then uh, what I've got here is an etch. So for our plate, we're gonna be doing a standard etch of one ounce of gum for four drops of phosphoric acid. So I wanna pre-mix that to start in my shot glass. So I have my one ounce of gum here. Your shot glasses probably have a measurement on them. And then what I'm gonna do is take some of that phosphoric acid that we have available for you. And an eyedropper. Make sure that you are wearing gloves during this whole process. As you can see, I'm putting on now, and I'm gonna put four drops of phosphoric into the, the gum Arabic uh, in the shot glass here. So I shouldn't, you won't be doing this over top of your plate, so make sure this is just for demonstration purposes so you can see. But I'm gonna take four drops Sure that it's four and only four. Put it in there and then I'm gonna set this off to the side. Put any excess phosphoric back into the container and make sure that, that the dirty phosphoric uh, contaminated eyedropper is off to the side somewhere where we can rinse it off later and make sure that it, you haven't left drops anywhere to buy, uh, burn anybody. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply pure gum Arabic to the borders and only to the borders. So you can see anytime I'm applying gum Arabic or any of the etch to the surface of the plate, I always start in the borders because the grease on my plate or on my stone, whichever you're, you're etching or processing, is somewhat sensitive still. So I'm gonna move that into the borders first. This also makes sure that if there was anything in the borders that was a contaminant, that it's kind of suspended in the gum first. And then I'm gonna move it all the way across the surface all at once as quickly as possible. If it ever, at any point in time, the surface gets really sticky, as you could see just a second ago, I reapplied a little bit of gum to make sure that this is kind of moving nice and smooth. So I can use either my gloved hand or a really soft bristled brush to apply my etches to my plate or to my stone, which you'll see in the future. And I always want to move this stuff around for roughly two minutes to make sure that, that the chemical reaction that I'm looking for is happening. So what we're doing here is we're, remember, we're desensitizing the areas that we haven't drawn in. Uh, and they are going to want to really accept water in those areas. And all those greasy areas are going to want to accept grease when we start rolling things up later. So once I've moved that around for about two minutes, then I'm gonna mix up my etch. So make sure that you stir it up before you start and then you're gonna apply a third of that etch to the border. Uh, use roughly a third, you don't have to use the whole thing, but I wanna move that around the border first. And then after I've moved it around the border, then I'm gonna move it over the entire image. And I wanna make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm moving it around, moving the acid around and uh, keeping it active over the whole plate. I don't really want it just sitting 
at any point in time. I just want to kind of keep it moving so that the acid concentration isn't sitting in one area at any, any point in time for too long. This is all sped up. So once again, another two minutes or so, uh, I like to use like a uh, song or music or something like that to, to kind of guide things. It doesn't, I don't always do exactly two minutes. I kind of keep it as a rough estimate. Uh, once I've moved it for two minutes, then I'm gonna apply the next third to the plate and I'm following those same principles. So border, then over the image, and I'm gonna move that around, keeping it active once again. You can see that this gets a little bit messy and, and the nice part is, is that gum arabic is cleaned up really easily with water. So here I am applying that last third for that last two minutes. Um, and once this is all done, then my next steps are to tight wipe the plate, which we're going to be using uh, the, the clumped up cheesecloth there. So first off, I'm going to remove excess gum because it's kind of messy with a damp sponge. So I don't want a drenching sponge. I just want it kind of damp just to take off some of the the high amounts of gum that I have here because the cheesecloth will get clumped up really fast and this is really easy to clean up. You can see that there's still gum on the surface but there's not enough. So what I want to do is I want to use pure gum again, not gum from my etch, to put fresh gum on there. It kind of uh, weakens any sort of acid that's left and then just provides a, a nice new little base of gum arabic on top of this. Um, you can think of the the gum is kind of, I guess, creating a stencil around my entire drawing. And so now uh, I want to tight wipe this. So my, I'm using three pieces of cheesecloth. The first one is kind of getting, doing a similar job to what the sponge was doing. It's like taking up most of the excess gum. My next one is the true tight wipe. So I'm really buffing this out like you are waxing a car. So you need to put a decent amount of pressure on this, as you can see here. Uh, and I'm trying to make sure that there's no streaks of gum over my image. So I don't move any like clumps or unfresh gum or fresh gum into the image area. Uh, you can see I mostly try to focus on the image. I don't really care too much about the borders because I can always come back in. This last piece, I'm just really, really lightly buffing over to make sure that there's no uh, streaks left in the image. Uh, I'm barely applying pressure here and I want it to feel like it's just kind of sliding and gliding over this. So the cleanup of this, I need to uh, take any of my leftover etch because I did not use the whole thing. Like I said, I, you don't necessarily have to use all of the thirds. I'm going to put that into uh, the border gum container, set that off to the side. Uh, if there's nobody behind you waiting to use the space. You can leave your, your plate taped down here because we're going to be doing the second etch soon. Everything else is going to go over and rinse out with water. So I'm going to rinse out the shot glass really well, make sure there's no gum left in it. I'm going to make sure that I'm squeezing water into the eyedropper and rinsing that out really well so that there's no lingering acid. All this stuff is going to set, get set to the side. I need to dry that off and put it all back where I got it. The cheesecloth, it's important that you rinse that out really well, otherwise it gets crusty. So I'm gonna rinse it, squeeze it out, rinse it, squeeze it out. And I'm gonna do this multiple times to make sure that there's no gum left in it. With all my pieces, uh, clean out my bowl, clean out my sponge. And then there's still one more step that I wanna take also with that cheesecloth to make sure that uh, there's really not any water lingering and so that they dry faster is so let me squeeze these guys out here and then what i want to do after this is i want to snap out the excess water from that cheesecloth so you'll see this here so i want to open it up all the way and then i'm just snapping out the extra water so that these things don't get crusty and then i need to hang it over um, something that isn't metal, hopefully, uh, to ensure that it dries out really fast. I'm drying everything up so that I can put it back so it doesn't get moldy somewhere. And then the last bit is if I did have to take my plate up, 
remove the tape, move my plate, and then I'm gonna use just soap and water to clean up any of that lingering gum. If you leave that for too long, it does become kind of like a, a glue on film. So we wanna make sure that that's all tidied up. So the next video is the plate roll up and then the second edge.